Welcome to a Marian moment as we pause daily to prepare ourselves to welcome Christ into our hearts during the Advent season. I am Father Dan Canberra of the Marians of the Immaculate Conception, stationed here at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. During Advent, I would like you to join me daily to reflect on the Word of God, to listen to the wisdom of the saints, and to make a spiritual communion. For those of you who may not be familiar with the term spiritual communion, it is simply a prayerful invitation by which we invite Jesus into our hearts at a time when we are not able to receive him sacramentally in Holy Communion. Please join me daily if you're able. And by this prayerful pause, prepare yourself to celebrate Christmas, the first coming of our Savior Jesus Christ, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, as we await his return in glory. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 8, verses 5 through 11. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word and my servant will be healed, for I too am a man subject to authority with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. To another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, and no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. In the diary of St. Faustina, at the end of paragraph 47, Jesus asked her, paint an image according to the pattern you see with the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. I desire that this image be venerated first in your chapel and then throughout the world. I promise that the soul will venerate this image, will not perish. I also promise victory over its enemies already here on earth and especially at the hour of death. I myself will defend it as my own glory. Jesus gives us the image of the divine mercy, the risen savior still pierced with the marks of his crucifixion, with his hand raised in blessing, saying to each one of us, peace be with you. Just as the centurion greeted Christ with profound faith, confident that he could do for him what it was that he was asking, so we come before Jesus in the divine mercy image. We come before Jesus in the most blessed sacrament. And from the depths of our hearts, we say to him, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, fill me with a confidence in your power and make manifest your glory in my life that one day I might be with you in eternity. By rescript of November 24th, 1922, the Sacred Congregation of Indulgences approved the following formula for a spiritual communion. Please join me in prayer. O Jesus, I turn towards the holy tabernacle where you live hidden for love of me. I love you, my God. I cannot receive you in holy communion. Come nevertheless and visit me with your grace. Come spiritually into my heart. Purify it, sanctify it, 
Render it like unto your own. Amen. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. It was the cure of ours who said, a spiritual communion acts on a soul as blowing does on a cinder-covered fire which was about to go out. Whenever you feel your love for God growing cold, quickly make a spiritual communion. Make it often, even several times a day. Christ so loved us that he gave us his body and blood that he might come to live within us. But even when we can't receive him sacramentally, we can make a spiritual communion, simply inviting him into our hearts and embracing his love for us. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus,